Okay, we're going to try this again because my last one was too long. Um, so I have the page pulled up here just to kind of um, reference, but we'll just answer the three questions. What could NASA have done differently, number one? Um, the biggest thing for me, just from reading everything, uh, is communication, for sure. Um, obviously, the O-ring seals were the main concern uh, for this disaster. Uh, they figured that out very quickly. Um, and it even talks about here on the page how there were concerns discovered with these, with these specific O-rings um, since 1977. Nine years um, had, had passed <laughs> between them initially discovering that and then using those same O-rings or at least similar ones that designed similarly uh, in um, solid rocket boosters that, you know, clearly had had not been uh, tested thoroughly. Um, it does talk also how about the uh, um, the record low temperatures of the launch um, did reduce the elasticity of those O ring um, O rings. So that's just another thing they could have done. I, I mean. If, if you're not testing, I, I, surely they had tested for temperature changes. But if they hadn't, then then they should have they should have postponed the launch. Uh, number two, what could Roger Boisdule, I don't know how to pronounce his name, have done differently, if anything? Um, as one of the lead engineers for Morton Theocal, or however you pronounce that company, uh, should have definitely been communicating better with NASA. It even says here, not this isn't him specifically, but it just says. Uh, there was an instance where NASA engineers suggested uh, something specifically change with the O-rings. Um, they wanted to include shims around the O-rings. Uh, and it says they received no response. Uh, no, no response from Roger, Allen, the other lead uh, engineer, or the company in general. That's a big red flag. Um, because it goes on to say about how NASA engineers... Um, continued to do some testing and then apparently were f sufficient with that testing, um, which is kind of scary. So there definitely should have been more communication. I doubt um, Roger would have lost his job from for postponing a launch because they were concerned for, um, you know, the integrity of these O-rings or just the SRBs in general. But um, I, I just, why I don't know why he, I don't even know why this is in here. I don't, I'm not sure why he would be fired or how he would be fired for, for doing that. I mean, post-tragedy, yes, he would probably be fired. Uh, possibly. I don't know if that actually happened, but I, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't blame them if, if they did do that. Okay, number three, what do you see as your future engineering professional responsibilities in relation to both being loyal to management and protecting the public welfare? Well, yes, you need to be loyal if you're an engineer. Um, of course, you should be doing your job, uh, especially if, people, if people's lives are on the line, you know, um, Technology in space is a big deal. Um, you know, not a lot of not a lot of people are working on rockets um, and sending people into space. And you want to make sure those people those people's lives are safe and sound. And um, you know, it's we can't test for everything, but uh, they're definitely it's it's hard to not blame either NASA or Morton Theocal because of the lack of communication um, and protecting the public welfare. I mean, yes, again, it's kind of the same thing, um, you know, that, that really hurts, <laughs> uh, NASA's, um, reputation for sure. After, you know, countless people, thousands of millions of people see that video because there is a video of it. Uh, it's really sad. Um, that's definitely going to hinder progress. I feel like, and just overall belief in, you know, the space race. Uh, in NASA's eyes. It, it, it just did, it's done more bad than good in my eyes. So anyway, that's what I think. Thanks.